Chiswick brings his defending champion Auburn Tigers to Arkansas today. Fresh from a hard fought win at South Carolina a week ago. They did it on the legs of Michael Dyer, the workhorse, with a school record 41 carries. A year ago, this game featured a Ryan Mallett Cam Newton matchup, but only one would survive the fight. For Tyler Wilson, it was a coming out party. But in the end, it was too much Heisman Trophy winner. Now it's Wilson's show to run with a number one pass offense in the league and a record setting wide receiver named Jarius Wright by his side. Auburn and Arkansas and the SEC on ESPN is next. An all familiar call of the Hogs. From Fayetteville, our matchup to top 15 teams. The defending national champion Auburn Tigers on the road here at Razorback Stadium against the 10th ranked team in the country. And when you talk about top 20 teams from the SEC, as you can see, there's a bundle of them. And a lot of them are from the SEC West. And that's what stands out in this ball game as we welcome you to Fayetteville, everybody. Brad Nessler with Todd Blackledge. Amazingly, Auburn's been in and out of the national rankings. Last week, they weren't even in there. And for the first time since 1984, a team has jumped from unranked to number 15 in the country. And partner, they're doing it this year with a whole different cast of characters. Yeah, a lot of different players, a lot of young guys. You know, last year this team with Heisman Trophy winner Cam Newton leading the way, he threw for 30 touchdowns, he ran for 20 more, and offensively, they just outscored everybody. But all their numbers are down. But last week, a huge win against South Carolina. They found a new formula. It was a heavy dose of Michael Dyer. It was win the time of possession and win the turnover margin. I would expect a similar approach tonight by the Auburn Tigers. Auburn would love to hold on to the ball about 35 minutes because this crew from Fayetteville can score in a hurry. And here come the Hawks. Sellout crowd loving their Arkansas Razorbacks. And while Auburn has done it in a very different way this year, Todd, you can talk about Arkansas and Bobby Petrino. Ryan Mallett's a New England Patriot. Now it's Tyler Wilson showing they're doing it the same way. We you know last year in the game against Auburn, Tyler Wilson introduced himself to the SEC. Right now, midway through the 2011 season, I think he's the best quarterback in the league. Now it helps that he has a great wide receiving core to throw to, and it helps that Bobby Petrino's on the sideline calling plays, but this is a dynamic offensive football team. All right. A very windy day yesterday in Fayetteville and much of the same right now 76 degrees but you can see some strong winds that could affect the kicking game a little bit tonight. Let's check in third member of our team Holly Rowe. Huh? Well guys for Auburn they have some offensive challenges to overcome tonight. They'll be without their two top wide receivers Emery Blake and Trevon Reed are home with injuries. So that's going to put some added urgency to the running game and ironically it's going to be two Arkansas kids that they'll look to. They're running back Michael Dyer is from Little Rock. Guys, he was literally the first guy onto the field tonight. He's been bouncing around in warm-ups. He is excited to be playing at home for the first time. And their change of pace quarterback, Kyle Frazier, is literally 10 minutes away from his hometown of Springdale, Arkansas. Their offensive coordinator, Gus Malzahn, told us if the game goes according to plan, we could see his change of pace at quarterback almost 25% of the time. All right, Holly, thanks. A crowd that has been waiting for this one for a long time. They had a lot of a lot of students out there in the tents for a good part of the week. Auburn won the toss and deferred. So that's Markel Wade back deep along with Dennis Johnson. Johnson, the career leader in SEC kickoff return. So he's been there, done that. There's Johnson. Cody Parkey has got it teed up. And he leads the SEC in touchbacks. So he's got a big leg, and that has been part of the field position Todd was talking about in the open that has helped Auburn to their 4 and 1 record. Here we go. And two yards deep, Wade will not bring it out. So that puts Arkansas at the 20 yard line as we take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick fil A. 
Jerry is right. How can you not call him an impact player? 13 receptions, a school record, 281 yards, and a touchdown last week. And he recovered a fumble for a touchdown. Joe Adams, not only out of the backfield, but as a return man, one of the most dangerous guys in the SEC. And Jake Beckett, they're happy to have him back. He's missed the last couple of games with an injury. He will apply some pressure on the Auburn quarterback tonight. But here's the Arkansas quarterback that we talked about, Tyler Wilson, with a first down. And they're going to give it straight ahead on the ground. And a nice five-yard pickup on the first play of the game. And that's a good sign for Arkansas. Tyler Wilson, huge game last year when Ryan Mallett was hurt. But last week, the biggest game of the SEC season, 510 yards. Takes some guys a month to yeah. throw for 510 yards. <laughs> I tell you what, Arkansas needed every single one of those 510 yards to win the game. Here's his first throw of the night behind his intended receiver. Probably could have been caught by Chris Gregg, the tight end, but it's incomplete. And it brings up an immediate third down. Well, it'll be interesting to see now what Auburn does on this third down play. Last week against South Carolina, they used a strategy where they took their defensive tackles out. They moved their defensive ends inside and brought two faster guys on the edge. This first third down play, they're keeping their two starting tackles, Carter and Whitaker, in the ballgame. Arkansas 43% on the year in their third down conversions through five games. So Wilson will work in the shotgun. Stands in and fires over the head of his intended receiver. It was Jarius Wright, and he had a step back there. But the ball sailed a little bit on Tyler Wilson. So Arkansas three and out on their opener. Now they got behind in the ball game last week down in Arlington. A&M really executed on offense, built a, an 18-point lead at halftime. And it was the second half, really, where Arkansas's offense really kicked in. And that's when their defense played well as, as well. Dylan Brading to punt, and that is a true freshman out of LaGrange, Georgia, Quan Bray. Who not only will be a main return man tonight, but he's going to have to play a lot of wide receiver, too, due to the injuries that Holly talked about for the starting wideouts. Auburn put a little pressure on the kicker. Oh, man, he got all of this one. Bray backpedals all the way to the 17-yard line. Broke one tackle, but not the second way, but he's buried at the 21. Great kick. Both the punters tonight have been exceptional for their teams, but for breeding, that was a bomb. When it looked like it was going to be excellent field position for the Auburn Tigers as we take a look at our impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A for the Tigers. Michael Dyer, 41 carries for 141 yards last week. Lutzen Kirkin, when you see number 43, just keep an eye on him because the ball will be around him in some form or fashion. And Nico Thorpe on the other side of the ball for Auburn, their leading tackler, and is tied for the interception lead as well. Auburn, first down, it's on 21-yard line. And it is dying. He's hit immediately. No gain on the first play. Well, when you talk to any of the Arkansas players and coaches defensively, they say, number one, we have to stop Michael Dyer. I mean, that's that's the key to the game. 41 carries last week, and he just grinded them out because only three of those 41 carries went for more than 10 yards. Didn't take long to see Kyle Frazier. Did it. Here he is on a handoff to McCaleb, trying to take it wide, and goes for about five. It'll be third down for Robert. Kyle Frazier played in the same offense that was Gus Malzahn's offense. He played at Shiloh Christian. And Gus Malzahn's former quarterback is now the head coach at Shiloh Christian. So he's very familiar with this offense. And he's known more as a runner right now than he is a thrower. But he can throw the football. Third down and long. Trotter throws on the run and throws a strike. First down, got it to Carr. When Darius Carr trying to pick up the slack for Emery Blake and the other starting wide receiver, Trevon Reed, that's not in the lineup tonight. Auburn again, no huddle. Dyer comes back in. And just inside their own 46 yard line. And here comes Dyer on the counter. Dyer down the sideline. Can they catch him? No, they can't. Touchdown, Auburn. 55 yards. And some of the folks from Springdale are celebrating. Well, beautiful block by the right tackle, Brandon Mosley. 
One of the seniors up there. Watch him kick his man out, and Dyer is going to cut right inside. And then this was a problem last week. Arkansas not able to set the edge of their defense. They got outflanked on the outside. Dyer was able to turn the corner, and you can't do that and be fundamentally sound on defense. I said Springdale, it's Little Rock for Michael Dyer, and he ran halfway to Little Rock with a 55-yard touchdown. The extra point by Parkey is good. So Auburn, much as they did a week ago, using the ground game. And in this case, the guy that was their workhorse last week gets him on the board first here tonight. For lack of a better term, Petrinoville outside Razorback Stadium. A lot of tents out there. I'm not sure how much homework was done in any of those tents this week. Right now, fans a little bit stunned by Michael Dyer's 55-yard touchdown. Capped an 80-yard drive in just two minutes. Well, again, more fundamental just from a responsibility standpoint defensively for Arkansas and a quality back like Michael Dyer, when he sees the corner that he can get, he's going to make you pay for it. Parkey to kick. Wade and Johnson are back deep. This one squibbed and taken by one of the up men. We got it out to about the 28-yard line. Three wideouts all come to the near side. And that's where the ball is going. Locked it out to Joe Adams with a couple of blockers in front. Joe puts the brakes on, and he had help getting the brakes put on it by Altorio Freeman. He made a nice open field tackle. Yeah, because that's not an easy guy to tackle on the open field. Joe Adams is shifty. He's fast. He's quick. And El Toro Freeman, who's an inside linebacker, comes inside out and makes this play. Watch him not slow down, breaks down, gets a hand in there and trips him up. And that's not an easy guy to, to get on the ground. Only a couple yard gain. And the pistol set. It'll be Dennis Johnson. And Johnson drags Jake Holland with him for a couple of yards. This is this is what it's like, been like for Tyler Wilson. I mean, against Alabama, he got knocked around. You know, they, they struggled in this game offensively, and he took some major shots. And you wonder if a guy can keep coming back, keep his focus downfield. He started the Texas A&M game the next week, and early in that game, he took some shots. But as that game wore on in the second half, he really hung in there and delivered some huge throws. He's shown a strong chin so far tonight. Here he is on third down, flares it out to Johnson on the run at the 40. Johnson the 30 and a first down Arkansas. They've got something working here as they're in to Auburn territory. Well, Auburn got fooled. They thought the back was going to stay in and block. They weren't expecting him to come out. Here he is, and he's going to just slip through the middle of the defense, and nobody's going to account for him. They're expecting him to block. Nobody picks him up, and Tyler Wilson does a nice job finding the back out of the backfield. Now the quick snap of the 28, and it's Adams coming the other way. Adams to the corner. Hickey stepped out of bounds at about the six. Tried to put his plant foot there and go airborne, but the left foot slid out of bounds, but it's first and goal. Well, Arkansas giving Auburn a little bit of their own medicine. Auburn known for their tempo offense, the quick snaps. Arkansas snaps it quick and gets another big play down inside the 10. 24-yard gain followed by a 22-yard pickup. Well, they got their big back in, Broderick Green. They got their fullback hero, Small. They like to run behind him. That's what they'll do. And it's Green right behind him for the touchdown. Broderick Green from six yards out. Hero Small is 255 pounds. Lines up at fullback, loves to play that position. Right behind him is Broderick Green, who's 245 pounds. Right at you. Stop it if you can. <laughs> and they couldn't. So Broderick Green, who had a couple of touchdowns, including the game winner last week, caps off a 71-yard drive in eight plays with another touchdown. And the extra point ties it at seven. 6.53 remaining in the first quarter. The Hogs have answered the call. Razorbacks and Tigers tied at seven. 7-7. <laughs> seven, seven. You got to get your fingers out of there yeah, quick, I think. You got that right. I think I'd be wearing a glove, maybe. This guy knows what he's doing, though. Now the Hawks answered the touchdown by Dyer with a 71-yard march of their own. And Broderick Green scored from six yards out. So Zach Hocker will tee it up. 
Juan Bray and Trey Mason, a couple of true freshmen, are waiting back deep. For the most part, the returns will all be done for Auburn tonight by true freshmen. That can be dangerous sometimes. One will have Auburn at the 20 yard line. Here's 7 7 tie with just under seven to go, first quarter. Trotter hands it off on the end around, and McCaleb's got another big gainer. As Todd said, you get this guy to the corner, and he can make things happen. Well, you have to respect the inside run of Dyer, so you have to really respect that fake, and then you've got to play good contained defense when he gets out on the edge. 19 yard pickup. Lutzen Kirkin goes out. Trotter on the give. Caleb's got a first down or very close to it. Jericho Nelson made the stop. Lemonier, who came in as the leading sack man for Auburn and had a forced fumble as well. And now a second one on the season has given his offense a great opportunity here. Second down in the yard. Frazier is back in at quarterback, the freshman. He already completed a pass, so we've seen him throw it. Primarily a runner, though. He's going to run behind Watson Kirkin, and he's got a first down. And he picked up about three, but good enough to move the sticks. This kid was the USA Today Offensive Player of the Year last year out of Shiloh Christian. Led his team to the 4A state championship his last three seasons as the starting quarterback. He's a winner, a competitor, and grew up coming to Arkansas games. He loved the Razorbacks. Eric McGee told us that he loved him when he was recruiting him, but uh, made a good choice going to Auburn. And now Trotter is back in. So is Michaela. End around, and now a pass coming up. Man open, but incomplete. CJ Uzuma was the guy throwing deep to D'Angelo Benton. So a little trickery there by Auburn, but it's incomplete. He's a high school quarterback out of Sewanee, Georgia, and. Uh, Tried that last week in the game and, and was incomplete. It was a different type of play. That was a better throw. That one he at least had it going in the right directions and deep enough. Just overthrown. Now it's Frazier and Dyer in the Auburn backfield. Second down at 10. But the give is to McCaleb. He's tackled as he just got across the 30-yard line. The Quinta Jones made the stop. See, better fundamental defense that time by Arkansas because they were able to turn McCaleb back in. You don't want to let that guy continue to get outside your defense. Turn him back in where there's more red shirts running to the football and stop him and force a third down play. And McCaleb's going out. Trey Mason comes in to the Auburn backfield. Again, watch Lutzen Kirkin and probably expect a throw from Kyle Frazier, or run from Kyle Frazier here. Third down and four. The fly sweep is to Mason, who hurdles his way to a first down. Boy, burst of speed by the freshman out of Lake Worth, Florida. And then he just went airborne for the last couple yards. They ran behind Lutzen Kirkin. He's going to lead the play. Gets out there, gets a block on the edge, as well as a nice block by Brandon Fulsey. Number 11, freshman tight end. First down at the 23. They fake the same play, and now Frazier takes it himself. And he's inside the 20. Here with a minute remaining in the quarter, 7-7, and Auburn threatening again. Trotter back in at quarterback with Dyer and McCaleb with him. And it's Dyer off the left side. Big opening and a first down and first and goal. Very similar formula right now that Auburn is trying to employ. They, they know coming in here, they're not going to win a shootout against Arkansas like they did last year. They've got to control the ball, run it, win field position, win turnovers. Dyer again, and again he finds room. He did most of that on his own. Got down to the seven, maybe even closer to the six. Last week for AM, Christine Michael ran for 230 yards and three touchdowns against this Arkansas defense. Michael Dyer trying to attack right in the heart of this defense as well this week. Frazier back in at quarterback. Second down and goal. He has a look to the sideline. And he's going to keep it himself. Frazier to the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn. 
And now the folks who have come to watch him here on the road in a big SEC game, a happy group. Well, <laughs> even when you know that Phil Lutzen Kirkin is going to lead you where the play's going, it still doesn't mean you can stop the play. Watch Kyle Frazier get right behind number 43 on the counter play. Gets a great block on the linebacker Franklin, and then Frazier gets it into the end zone. Cody Parkey in for the point after. To try to put Auburn back in front by seven, and he does. Good look and drive. Really mixed it up well. We had musical quarterbacks going on throughout the drive, and in the end, it was the freshman, the Arkansas native, who took it in from seven yards out. So Auburn with a good looking drive. The kick, Dennis Johnson is just going to see this sail way over his head out of the back of the end zone. That's a nice weapon to have when your kicker leads the SEC in touchbacks and just blasted another one. So Arkansas is going to have to work from the 20. Again. Tyler Wilson from the 20 yard line. And they go with a ground game, and it's Roderick Green. Tell you what, this fullback is the real deal now. He does like the block. Hero Small, he's originally from Baltimore, Maryland. He went to a couple junior colleges, leading the way for Broderick Green. Auburn at the end of one, leading on the road, 14 to 7. Ty Blackledge and Holly Rowe, Brad Nessler with you from Razorback Stadium, where they trail by a touchdown. Wilson under some pressure on a crossing pattern, got it. Joe Adams got a block, he got a first down. Well, a really nice job out there. Was that Broderick Green? Yeah, Broderick Green, who was in the pass pattern. You know, Arkansas likes to release all five guys in the route. And Broderick Green peeled back and got a block on the man trailing Childs and got him about 10 more yards. Watch number 29, peel back. Well, we saw it. <laughs> I saw it. He got a good block. <laughs> you can trust us. Wilson. And a crossing route again, and a big collision at the 46-yard line. The Jarius Wright hangs on. Auburn is starting to bring a little pressure, more consistent pressure. I would expect to see Bobby Petrino counter that with a screen here pretty soon. They're going no huddle, going a one-back, three receiver, and a tight end set. Screen is a good way to offset pressure. Wilson looks left and comes back to the right to Childs inside the 40 and Childs to the 35. About three yards shy of the first down as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, when we're talking about this Auburn defense, it's important to recognize there's only two guys starting on this defense who were on that national championship team last year. Their coach, Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, told us we've been playing 25, 27 guys just trying to get the right combinations. And even though their stats don't show it, they're at the bottom of the SEC in a lot of categories. They started over two weeks ago. Their goal, be the most improved defense. Drag the tight end comes in and sets in the slot on the right. They run it that way to the corner. A first down run by Johnson, and he's still on his feet. Johnson inside the 20. Whoa, what a run by Dennis Johnson. What a run by Johnson. What a block by Grant Freeman, the senior right tackle, or strong tackle, I should say, who's leading the play out here. Watch number 79. He's going to lose his helmet, but he's not going to lose his block. <laughs> and Dennis Johnson just keeps spinning again, just like Michael Dyer, a hard guy to tackle, low to the ground. And now the swing pass to Joe Adams. And Joe doing a dance, giving ground to try to gain some, and tiptoes probably back to the line of scrimmage. Exciting looking, no gain on the play for Joe Adams. We just worked our way out of the 12-minute mark of the first half. Auburn leading by a touchdown. Michael Dyer, a 55-yard run. And Kyle Frazier, the freshman quarterback, a seven-yard run. Those are the two Auburn scores. Bobby Petrino still trying to run the football because when he's at his best of a play caller, it's when he's got the run game going and the play action going. Tyler Wilson's completed his last eight passes. Make it nine. Jarius Wright's got it first and goal. See, there's that stepping up in the pocket again. Don't panic. Feel the rush come around you. Step up and keep your eyes downfield and then make your decision. Don't flush out of there. Just move up and then make the throw. So it's first and goal right at the five yard line. I would say it's Broderick Green time again. Arkansas's red zone scoring. They missed on a possession for the first time this year. The Razorbacks trying to tie this game up. 
Unbalanced line left. They've got extra defense, offensive linemen to the left. They fake it that way. Wilson to throw. Got it to the one. Did he get in, though? Austin so. Tate at about the one-foot line. Well, Nico this, Thorpe, nice tackle. Yeah. It looked like a touchdown for sure. You know, but Nico Thorpe hit Tate high enough to keep him from getting in the end zone. If he hits him any lower than this, Tate falls over him into the end zone for the touchdown. Perfect tackle by Nico Thorpe. Nico Thorpe, one of our impact players, and that was a dandy. But now you got Piero Small and Broderick Green, and that'll be what Auburn's trying to tackle, and they do. Eltorio Freeman dropping for a loss. Well, they tried to go unbalanced line to the right this time. Auburn got their defense shifted and were able to get penetration into the backfield. Watch right in the middle of the defense. Arturo Freeman, number 21, he's going to read the play. They're, they're over shifted to the right. He slips right inside and hits Green in the backfield. Basically, Ted Roof told us they just pretend that they move the nose guard over to the guard instead of the center when that unbalanced line situation occurs. And now it's Wilson rolling to throw on third and goal. Comes back, he's got a man open, but he did make it into the end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas. Boy, they almost got to him at the goal line again. But he leans forward, uses all 6'6", 250 pounds of that frame for the touchdown. Pretty good throw by Tyler Wilson, too, because this, I think, was a designed throwback. And he does a nice job of sticking it in there to Tate. And that time, the tackle was not high enough to keep Tate out of the end zone. And Zach Hocker will come in for the extra point. Which is good. That took us one extra play to even the ball game. But a good one indeed in Fayetteville. 9.36 till halftime, tied at 14. Zach Hocker will tee it up. Juan Bray and Trey Mason, a couple of freshmen, waiting on it for the Tigers. And this one, Bray's going to have to handle it and better cover it and take a knee. <laughs> Got a little dangerous there. Yeah. McCaleb. Gets four. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, already in this ball game, the Arkansas defense has given up 141 rushing yards. It was a huge problem last week against AM. They gave up 381. During that extended break, the defensive coordinator, Willie Robinson, was over here talking to the linebackers, Highsmith and Franklin. They wanted to get the run fits figured out. Now, remember, last week against AM, they were much better in the second half, allowed just three points in that second half. So we'll see if they can figure out these run fits for Auburn. He didn't like some of the attempted tackles by his guys in the secondary either last week. Dyer will check back in there in the backfield with Trotter off play action. Wanting to throw. And now pulling it down. Down he goes. Well, credit Jake Beckett. He didn't get the sack, but he made the play. They have missed Jake Beckett for the last three games. His leadership, the way he rushes the passer, the energy he plays with. Watch number 91 beat the right tackle Mosley. Chase Trotter in and out of the pocket. He doesn't get the sack, but he gets credit for the play. Gosh is a guy that made the tackle, but Beckett, one of our impact players at the beginning of the game, making his presence felt there and forcing a third down at 14. On third and 14, play action. Trotter overshot McCaleb, who was a safety valve out there in the flat, and they will have to punt it away. This should give Arkansas a pretty good field, goal, uh, uh, field position. You know, Holly talked about Emory Blake not being here and Trevon Reed out with the shoulder injury, the wide receiver position. You know, they started this year without their top two guys. Darvin Adams and Terrell Zachary both graduated, so this is a depleted wide receiver unit playing in the game tonight on the road here. Joe Adams, you saw him back. Markwell Wade is there with him. Dual return man. So Clark might have to punt it to one of them, but he hits it a mile in the air, and that's going to cause a fair catch anyway. So nice there punt. Nice punt. All the way back to the 35-yard line. Clark did his job that time. 7.35 till halftime and a tie game in Fayetteville. Arkansas. 
from its own 35 yard line. Nice punt by Clark. Still decent field position for Tyler Wilson and company. He's hit 11 in a row after starting three out of eight. Make it 12 straight. Flares it out to Dennis Johnson. Johnson picks up about seven before Jawara White knocked him out of bounds. You know, when Tyler Wilson came in the game last year against Auburn, Ryan Mallett got hurt. They were on the road. He missed his first pass, and then he hit something like 13 or 14 in a row in that ball game. Ended up throwing for over 300, four touchdowns. Two fourth quarter interceptions, though, really hurt their team's opportunity to win as Auburn scored the last 28 points of the game. But uh, this guy, as he's on rhythm, he's hard to stop. Johnson, oh, Mars, he stood up by Octorio Freeman. Second or third time tonight, we've seen Freeman with a form tackle. Put his helmet right in the chest of the ball carrier. Yeah, Freeman has done a nice job of anticipating getting to the, the backfield before the back has a chance to turn up field and we've seen him do that two or three times tonight. So now third down. This will be a big hold for the Auburn defense if they can force the Razorbacks to give it back with six and a half minutes to go. Wilson. Well he's still on the mark. Joe Adams first down. And what's that 13 straight completions. See because this receiving core is so talented. I mean, as a quarterback, you just look and see where your best matchup is. And he sees Joe Adams on the inside working against a safety, and he says, I like that matchup better. You know, I mean, he's got so many choices in this offense. Find the matchup you like and work that matchup. Now the draw play to Dennis Johnson. And Johnson drags some tacklers with him for about three. Aaron Bates holding on. Holly. Well, Todd, just what you're talking about, when we spoke with Tyler Wilson yesterday, he told us even going back to his high school playing days, he's always had a knack for feeling who's open. He said sometimes you just get a sense, and in this offense, it's been perfect for him. He hasn't gone to just one guy, Jarius Wright, like he did last week. He's been feeling guys who are open, just like he said. Second down at six. Stands tall in the pocket, fires on the sideline. And a perfect strike to Kobe Hamilton this time. We haven't mentioned his name till now. Well, it was a cover two look. That means there's a corner short and a safety deep, and there's a hole right in between them. And Tyler Wilson throws it right into that hole. 22 more yards to the 22. Everything Tyler Wilson is dialing up is working Childs on a crossing route what to the 15. What did Ted Roof tell us yesterday? We can't let Tyler Wilson just go out and throw past Skeleton against right, us. That's, that's what happening. it feels like right now. I mean, they're not getting enough pressure on him, and he's in a real comfort zone, and he's seeing everything that he needs to see. Back to the ground. Johnson puts his hand on the ground and keeps his balance for a couple. That was a good run by Johnson. Good vision because there was pressure coming from the outside, an unblocked man, and if he would have continued outside, he would have gotten hit in the backfield for a loss of yardage. He was able to see the pressure and cut inside and get the first down. Move the chains. They can get another first down down near the two. Johnson with a stiff arm. He's to the five, or very close to it. Nico Thorpe brought him down. One guy that we haven't even mentioned yet tonight is, is the absence of Niall Davis, who last year ran for 1,300 yards and 13 touchdowns. And when we saw this team against Ohio State in the Sugar Bowl, offensively, they were outstanding. They had great balance. Well, they lost Davis in the summer in a preseason scrimmage, and their running game is just now starting to get back on track. And now the end zone. Touchdown, Darius Wright. They run, they run, they run, and you think they might go with another run on second and three, and instead, Bobby Petrino comes up firing Jarius Wright for the touchdown. Well, where's the matchup this time? This time he liked Jarius Wright on to Sharvin Bell on the outside single coverage, and he throws it over the back shoulder. Over the outside shoulder, impossible to defend, and this is a quarterback who is feeling it right now. Extra point gives Arkansas a touchdown lead. Auburn will get it to start the third quarter, as Todd mentioned, but they'll do it.
trailing by a touchdown. Halftime with the Razorbacks up 21 to 14 as we check in with Holly. Well, Coach, what was the explanation you got from the officials on that touching? He said that the guy got pushed into the ball, therefore I can't review it. Okay. You seemed a little frustrated in that last series with your offensive line. What do they need to do better right now, Coach? We need to run block better. we got to come off the ball, sustain, and then finish. Dennis is running the ball real well. We need to finish our blocks. Tyler Wilson is on fire. How do you continue to right his arm? We just got to make sure we protect him and the receivers will get open. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, the Razorbacks head to the locker room. They've got the halftime lead. 21-14 is our score as we send it to Reese, Mark, and Lou in our studio for the Wendy's halftime report, guys. As we're just about set to start the third quarter. 21-14 as you take a look at the first half. Statistically, Auburn started off great on the ground, and then the Razorbacks sort of slowed them down. The passing yardage and the time of possession is in the favor big time of Arkansas. I would think, Todd, that... If you want to do something, you got to get the quarterback that's hit 17 in a row out of the flow somehow. Yeah, well, we expected the passing yardage to be heavily in favor of Arkansas, but that time of possession is the most alarming for Auburn. They have got to control that in the second half and keep this at a one-score game. They can't fall two touchdowns behind this Arkansas team. Trey Mason and Quan Bray are back awaiting the second half kickoff. And again, deep kick out of the back of the end zone. And Auburn will have to go to work from its own 20 yard line. Obviously, Auburn's going to have to find some way to get some aerial yards. Yeah. But if they can get it to Michael Dyer and get back in that groove they had in the first quarter, they should be all right. If they can keep it as a one score game, then they don't have to throw a whole lot. They've right. got to keep feeding it to Dyer and Michaela. Both of those guys ran the ball well, and they've got to stay ahead of schedule. You know, they've got to mix some Frazier runs from the quarterback position, stay ahead of the chains on the early downs so they don't have to put the pressure on Barrett Trotter. Well, they're going to start things off with their freshman quarterback, Kyle Frazier, at the controls, the Arkansas native. And he'll give it off to Dyer. Dyer bounces off, cuts to the other side of the field. That's going to cost him yardage, actually. Nice job by Tremaine Thomas to stay home and make the tackle. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, exactly what you're talking about is what Gene Chizik just told me for Auburn. He said he has huge concerns about the time of possession. They're not doing what they did last week, keeping South Carolina off the field. He said, we got away from running the football. We were running it well in the first quarter. Watch for them to come back to it. But one important note, their left guard, Jared Cooper, is out for the game. In his place will be number 62, Chris Slade, a redshirt freshman. So after Dyer just got a couple, they're going to give it to him again. This time he stays the course to the right side, and Alonzo Highsmith brings him down. He's going to bring up third down right away, though. Well, he had 41 carries a week ago in Columbia, South Carolina, and Gus Malzahn and Gene Chizik said, you know what, he's built for this. He could have carried it 50 times. He may not get that many carries tonight, but he's going to get a bunch of them here in the second half. One thing you don't want to do is open up the third quarter with a three and out. Frazier back in. Hudson Kirkin's going to lead the way. Frazier, first down run. Wow. He's nifty. Yeah, he is. You know, as a senior in high school last year, right down the road here at Shiloh Christian, he ran for 1,164 yards, 22 touchdowns. This is just power football, but you run it with the quarterback. And again, that's the best option for them right now. Now Dyer trying to take it wide, and Arkansas is waiting for him. Walks on the play, Jerry Franklin and Eric Bennett combined on the stop. I think they need to mix runs with Kyle Frazier, throw the football to Michaela, get him out on the perimeter, get the ball in his hands quickly, out in space, and see if he can make some plays for you out in space. Frazier back in. He'll keep it. Frazier on the run, puts a nice move out on the open field, and you can see his strength as he goes for about 10 yards before they can drag him down. Tevin Mitchell made the tackle. See, this is just counter football. They run power and they run counter. And they use Lutzenkirchen, number 43, as one of the pullers. He pulls with the linemen, and, the, and they just run right behind him. They pull the guard, they pull Lutzenkirchen, and they run the quarterback on a counter. Frazier back in at quarterback and an empty backfield. He'll be joined by Lutzen Kirkin and will follow him. And now cut it outside, and he's not going to get anything. Highsmith again, along with Tevin Mitchell. 
The penalty. The penalty on Lutz and Kirkin put them way behind schedule. They don't have a passing game. They, they just don't. They do not have an effective passing game. The only passing game they're going to have is if they can go play action on an early down. And I think it's going to have to come from Kyle Frazier when the Arkansas defense is expecting him to run. Clark to punts. It's at a mile in the air. And fair catch. Called for and taken. Clark does a good job. Yep, that's what they want. They pin him inside the 10. Under eight minutes remaining in the third quarter. Nice stand by the Hawks defense, led by Alonzo Highsmith. Well, the Auburn special teams do their job, pinning Arkansas inside its own 10 yard line. First down at the eight. Tyler Wilson, if you're just joining us, is connected on 17 straight passes. I'm sure Auburn's hoping he cooled down in that locker room a little bit. They're going to run it here. And it's Joe Adams with a hurdle. Great speed. Adams down the wow. sideline. He's gone. 92 yards for a touchdown. Well, it's not really a trick play. But it is kind of a trick play because you sneak little Joe Adams in there. He's a wide receiver. You expect him to line up outside. He lines up as the tailback. They flip it to him. He follows the fullback and runs 92 yards. To add insult to injury, Bates with the unsportsmanlike penalty call. Joe Adams. We told you an impact player at the beginning of the game, not only as a receiver and as a return man, but there's not much to tackle because Joe doesn't have a lot of body and nobody got a hand on him almost after the hurdle job to get himself clear. And he has great speed and he showed it. 92 yard touchdown run. Just like that, a two touchdown lead. 21 unanswered Arkansas points. Well, Kiero Small, the fullback, who we've seen a lot, number 36, is going to lead, and little Joe Adams is going to be right behind him. They're also going to get a block by Kobe Hamilton, number 11. He comes in and gets a crack block on the linebacker Bates, and that just frees the inside. There's the block by Hamilton. Here comes the block by Small, and then Joe Adams' speed does the rest. Also, Chris Gregg, number 80, got a nice block down the field at the end of the play on Thorpe. What a beautiful, executed play to start the third quarter for Arkansas. Let's see if he can kick this one through the uprights. I'd say he's got a shot at hitting that All-State net down there. See if he can get it that far. Zach Cocker, the kick. Got it all the way down almost to the tunnel there. That's good. Whoa, what a hit by Franklin. Hello, Michael Dyer. Arkansas has added a touchdown this th third quarter, and Auburn has been held scoreless. McCaleb got it to the 15, and that might be it for the third quarter. Auburn had it working last time. They had the ball, got down in Arkansas territory, where an Eric Bennett interception stopped that drive. Now they've got 15 minutes to do something about it. But Arkansas on their home field, tough place to play if you're Auburn and you're two scores down. End of three. Pick suey time in Fayetteville. 28-14, Hogs in front as we head to the fourth. We start the fourth quarter 
of our college football prime time presented by Hampton Hotels with Auburn in a deep hole. They're down there where the student section is making it even tougher. On him with a third down and eight for Barrett Trotter. Somebody needs to step up and make a big play, a big catch for Auburn right now. No, that's not it. Got to give your running backs a chance, and Trotter got that too far out in front of McCaleb. So punting time again for well, the Tigers. It, maybe it's us, but we've seen this is our third game where we've seen two quarterbacks have really difficult times throwing the football. We were at Penn State against Alabama, Ohio State against Miami, and tonight this Auburn duo, seven for 17 now throwing the football. Yeah. Towering kick. Way back at the 33 yard line. Clark's had one bad punt tonight, and he has made up for it many times since. Tough night throwing the football for the Auburn Tigers in the SEC and here on ESPN. Arkansas leading 28 14 here in the fourth quarter as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championships. Wilson. And a crossing route complete to his tight end, Gray. And he gets out to the 39. Greg had 14 catches coming into the game tonight. You know, not as accomplished of a receiver as DJ Williams, who played here for the last couple years. Now won with the, the Chargers. Won the Mackey Award last year. Second and five. And nice job by Aaron Bates. He's made a lot of tackles tonight. Junior out of Memphis, not the biggest linebacker in the world, but a former safety. And now playing outside linebacker. Now third down. Auburn has been able to stop Arkansas the last couple of drives on third down situations. They could use another one. Dennis Johnson in the pistol set behind Wilson. He has time to throw an incomplete. Nico Thorpe makes the play and grab the intended receiver. So another punt coming up. A lot of times when you see that, you, you see the, the defender with his right hand on the back of the receiver and he makes the play with his left hand. And a lot of times that gets called. In this case, Thorpe got a clean play. You see the right hand grabbed, and a lot of times that gets flagged. It did not draw a penalty. He does knock the ball away with his left hand, but the right hand got away with a little bit of a hold. So breathing set to punt again. And the return on for Auburn. As Gray will camp under this one and take it, and immediately he's decked. Might have even lost a yard on the return. Ross Rasner down on the special teams to make the hit. So you want to be a long snapper in the yeah. SEC. Seems like a safe enough job. Well, yeah, what do you think? They're not allowed to hit you while you're snapping the ball. And Alan Dapolanio for Arkansas is in pretty good shape. But watch what happens to him after he snaps it. He gets double teamed. He gets flat back, pancake, <laughs> and then they lay on him. I mean, they must have thought he was the most dangerous guy on the punt coverage team ever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Auburn. Has got to get something going here offensively, trailing by two touchdowns. Play action. Trotter fires down the middle and it's intercepted. Coming the other way off the deflection. Tremaine Thomas with the interception. Now, the, the, this, the, the passing game has just been non existent for Auburn. And this ball is a little bit high, but it's a catchable pass for D'Angelo Benton. I mean, it's it hits both hands. D'Angelo Benton is right here. He's going to run a crossing route. It's a, it's a good protection. The play action holds the linebackers. There's a big seam to throw the football. That's got to be caught. The ball gets tipped in the air. It gets intercepted. And again, the, the, the wide receivers have been non-existent for Auburn tonight. I know they're missing their two best in Emory Blake and Trevon Reed, but the guys that have stepped up have not stepped up. Second interception of the year for Thomas. Now they go back to the ground game. That's that power side with the extra blocker. Roderick Green follows those blockers and gets a nice game. Well, I think Arkansas has got to go for score here now. They got to be aggressive. That 
You know, they, they just were handed a gift on the missed opportunity, the, the tip pass. They've got great field position. They've gone kind of a little stale offensively. The last two possessions, they got a chance now to, to put a fork in Auburn. We know how good they are in the red zone. We can say that officially this is the red zone right at the 20 yard line. Second down at four. And Green knocked down by Jonathan Evans after picking up maybe a half yard. Third down along three here for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Play action. Wilson with pressure incomplete. And Darren Bates again was applying the pressure on Wilson. Tell you what, credit this Auburn defense because the last couple uh, possessions they have really stepped up. They come on the field with their back against the wall after the turnover. There is a flag down, but they got pressure and forced Tyler Wilson to throw that football away. Illegal shift, offense, two players moving once and did not reset for a full second. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. That's why they were talking to the coach to give him his options. They'll decline it. That'll still bring out the field goal unit. And Zach Hocker. Hocker hit the left upright in the first quarter from 34. This will be a 36 yard attempt from the right hash mark. Hockey's kick down the way, and this one's good. 12 10 remaining. Arkansas adds to its lead, and Trotter and the Auburn offense have got to figure out something. It's getting late. 31 to 14 now, Arkansas, as they're trying to go to 5 and 1 and even their record in the SEC at 1 and 1. Zach Hocker, who hit the field goal, set to kick. Auburn use a big play from their special teams because their second half passing, one for five, 44 yards, and two interceptions. And that one 44 yarder was the flea flicker that works. Taking two yards deep, Trey Mason's going to bring it out. And Mason flattened as he got out near the 25 yard line. You know, you look back at Arkansas their whole season, they might think 18 down at halftime last week. They hang in there, they come back. Wilson a touchdown pass to Ronnie Wingo. And then Tyler hits another pass. Hamilton who's going to fumble it. But talking about being in the right place at the right time, Wright recovers it. And then Wilson a two-point conversion. Broderick Green capped everything off with a three-yard touchdown run. And they come from 18 down to beat Texas A&M, 42 to 38. And with that, they springboard ahead now. And they got a big lead at home. Quick throw. <laughs> when things are going bad, they're going bad. Yeah. Hudson Kirk and doesn't drop men. Got to wonder as you look ahead, Todd, the next week, and we're going to see Auburn again. What's Gene do? Do you go with a young quarterback? Do you go with a backup guy? Barrett Trotter hasn't gotten it done tonight. Haven't seen Clint Mosley. They spoke highly of him. This guy is the future, somewhere down the line. Frazier, they're going to let him throw here. Long and intercepted again by Tremaine Thomas. Second time tonight for Thomas. Well, Kyle Frazier is going to see Tremaine Thomas in his nightmares tonight, I'm afraid. Well, Kyle Frazier, a young quarterback, is staring down where he wants to go, and Tremaine Thomas, a veteran safety, is staring down the quarterback. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. He follows his eyes to the football, going for Lutzenkirchen, and Kyle Frazier never saw Thomas. He saw the linebacker, Highsmith, beat in coverage, but he didn't see the safety coming over to help, and Thomas picked him. And the return to the 16-yard line. So Arkansas sets up shot in the red zone again. Two tight ends, the big set to the right, and they go the other way, actually, on the run. Not much of a game for Broderick Green. There'll be better days, young man. Yeah. Well, I agree. I think he is the future, obviously, but he's not there yet. He's not ready to be the future. 
You know, they, they brought him along slowly. They've added to what they've asked him to do. Tonight, maybe they asked him to do a little bit too much. Yeah. He wasn't quite ready to throw the football downfield. Coach Chizik told us yesterday he's a very intelligent young man, and he knows what he doesn't know. <laughs> he just had some, some more tough lessons, I'm afraid, tonight here at Razorback Stadium. Loss on the running play for Broderick Green. El Toro Freeman, who's had a nice night, inside linebacker, made the hit. I'll tell you what, Auburn's defense now has answered the challenge. Yeah, they their have. offense is struggling. Their passing game is, is kind of non-existent. But defensively, they have answered and responded to the challenge. Wilson, here comes pressure. Throws to Dennis Green. Green with a convoy. Heading to the corner, touchdown. There's a flag down back in the area of maybe a late hit on the quarterback. I don't know. This was an all-out blitz by Auburn. And the perfect call by Bobby Petrino on the screen. Dennis Johnson from... 15 on the defense. That penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. Dennis Johnson, 18-yard touchdown. They brought safeties, which means the middle of the field and the back of the defense is completely wide open. And the perfect call against that kind of pressure was the screen. And Tyler Wilson was patient and got the ball to Dennis Johnson for the big play and the touchdown. Dennis Johnson's second receiving touchdown of the year. Extra point is good. And so Arkansas takes advantage of the interception immediately. Pressure is going to come right up the middle. They brought both safeties. Tyler Wilson has to retreat. There's the late hit, but he retreated enough to get the ball out to Dennis Johnson, and then there's nobody in the back end of the defense because it was safeties who were blitzing. So Wilson continues to take big hits and still deliver. And that one was right to the helmet again. Blasted out of the end zone. So Auburn only has 550 to work with. I, I think one of the things they need to do is figure out how to throw the football to Michaela Moore. Even if they have to line him as a slot receiver, get him the football out in space a little bit more to go along with the Michael Dyer running, the Kyle Frazier when he comes in and runs the football. Because McCaleb's a weapon, and, and they, they're a little bit limited in playmakers right now. Here's Dyer, their playmaker when they stay ahead of the sticks, as Todd has talked about tonight. He's very much a weapon. But, you know, those two guys, there's really only five starters from a year ago when they won the national yeah. championship. Dyer and McCaleb, I guess you can toss right, those guys together as a starter. Brandon Mosley, the right tackle. So that, that, that's it yeah. on offense. And Lutzenker. Right. And then two on defense. So it's a completely different team. The Auburn fans are aware of that, obviously. Another busy night for Dial. It's his 21st carry. He's over 100 yards again. Last week, 41. This week, 21 so far. Well, the positive for Auburn, 290 yards rushing. Uh, that, that's, a, <laughs> that's a great number. Sounds like a Georgia Tech night. Yeah. yeah. But they just have to keep that score more manageable. This guy's been part of that rushing yardage. In that case, Frazier gets nothing. Alfred Davis, the first to meet him. So, at the beginning of the night, for the Little Rock native, Michael Dyer, a big 55-yard touchdown run, and Auburn was in front. But Arkansas comes storming back and show why they're the 10th-ranked team in the country. You know, this, the story for Arkansas always is going to be is can their defense hold up? Yeah. You know, their offense is going to be able to move the ball and score points. Can they play defense enough to be a championship caliber team? Trotter sails one over the head of Lutzen Kirchner again. Second half last week against AM, the defense really rose up. 
held them to three points. They've played a pretty solid game all the way around. They've given up rushing yards, yes, but they've really squeezed this Auburn offense, and they haven't given up big plays. One big run. By that guy. By, uh, yeah. Joe Adams. That's the difference, really, in the second half, the Adams touchdown run. Well, you're talking about Arkansas only giving up one long run to Dyer, right? Yeah, Dyer's Down long run. To the one yard line. Nice, nice putt <laughs> again. I give this guy credit. Yeah. He had one shank job for 11 yards at the beginning, but he's done well since from the end zone. And this might be a safety. Nope. I'm going to say at the two foot line. Auburn's defense not giving up. Yeah. They're still playing hard. Well, that's what you want to see. Will they continue to fight? Will they continue to compete even though the game is out of reach? Because there's a lot of football season left, and as we already showed you their schedule, they are in the midst of a very, very difficult stretch. Roger Green is about six yards deep in his own end zone. It'll be Wilson to throw out of it. And he's going deep down the sideline. Incomplete intended for Childs. So third and ten from the one. We showed you Arkansas schedule coming up. Very winnable games. Their toughest games at home. The other thing is they get a week off next week. So they get a chance to rest. Recover and. Uh, they secure this win here tonight. They've gotten through their tough stretch pretty good. They lost to Alabama, then back-to-back -back win over a ranked AM and a ranked Auburn team. Good time for a rest. Roderick Green and Dennis Johnson done a nice job tonight as the running backs. They haven't had to use Ronnie Wingo, who have been kind of nursing a foot injury. And he's one of their more electrifying guys, especially as a receiver out of the backfield. So he'll get a chance to heal up. Green, though, has been a load tonight again, and he's done a heck of a job. And we said coming back from a knee injury back in basically six months is almost unheard of. And you start wondering, are they going to be a factor? It looks like they are. And there's there's an offensive coordinator and his quarterback hugging over there on the sideline. That's one thing Bobby Petrino said. Garrick McGee had our team believe it against Texas A&M at halftime last week. He relates to the players so well. And uh, he said, I know we're going to win the game, even though we we're down 18 points at halftime. They won that one. And tonight's going to be another big win at home. So the Razorbacks are going to go to five and one. They have won four of the last five now in this series. Came in four and one for the second straight year. So even their record now at one and one in SEC play. And Auburn's down to a couple of snaps here. And they have Clint Mosley in at quarterback. First time we've seen him. And he comes up throwing and they complete a ball out to Benton. And um, probably going to be it right there. Tigers have to go back to the drawing board with Florida coming in to Auburn next weekend. Arkansas big win on their home field. 38 to 14 is the final. Coaches meet at midfield. Bobby Petrino has beaten the defending national champion for the second time in his coaching career. And let's check in with Holly. Well, Tyler, at one point during this game, you completed 17 straight passes. Can you describe that moment you were going through then? I think that was, uh, you know, mid-second mid half or second quarter, and our, our tempo was really good, and, and you kind of get in a groove, and I and, uh, was on, on the same page with all our receivers. They did a great job tonight, and, uh, you know, I, I really felt good. You were taking a beating out there, though. How do you describe the toughness you showed tonight? You're losing your voice a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. That's kind of, you know, when we play in an environment like this, you got to talk a lot and be verbal out there. So, uh, you know, it was a good win tonight for us, and, and uh, 
I'm proud of the way our team played. Your defense was struggling in the first quarter, but how do you describe the way they came back and pulled it together? Hey, if, if they, you know, they only give up 14 points, I think we got a great shot to win a lot of games. And, and uh, you know, they did a tremendous job. And, and uh, again, I'm happy. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, Tyler, go get some hot tea and honey and lemon, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> We feel your pain on talking for three and a half hours, but at least we don't have to scream up here for the most part. Something for Arkansas fans to scream about, though. 38-14 win, resounding victory on their home field tonight. That's going to do it for us. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire ESPN crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the hogs roll big.